Welcome to Right Now Workshop Podcast, where you can write a book and change the world. I'm your host, Kitty Buholtz, and this is episode 189, Self-Publishing 101, an interview with James Blatch, coming to you on Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. Now, if you've been listening for any length of time, you know I'm a huge fan of Mark Dawson and James Blatch and the Self-Publishing Formula website and everything that they're doing there and the Self-Publishing Show podcast and all the fantastic things that you can learn there. And once again, I will just say, if you're not listening to that podcast, I think that you definitely want to give it a try. So they opened up their self-publishing 101 class uh, a week or two ago, maybe a couple weeks ago. And um, I had just this tail end hurry up opportunity that I could interview James about it and ask him some questions. And at the time this interview goes live, you'll still have just a couple of days where you'll be able to sign up for the course if after listening to James talk about it, you feel like this is something good for you. I've signed up for this course. I'm actually in both of the courses that Mark Mark Dawson hosts. And um, I really think that they're amazing. Um, I haven't gotten all the way through either one of them, which is um, just a, a bad, bad kitty. It's, a, it's just a, a reflection of um, my ridiculous lifestyle of moving around a lot and having a lot going on. But now... 2020 is my year. <laughs> I'm in a lot of classes, actually, and I plan on finishing all of them this year. But definitely, I'm going to be finishing up these two classes. And I will tell you uh, what my personal experience is and how I go from X book sales to Y book sales after doing some of the things that they teach you. Um, both of the classes are super good. The only one that's open right now to sign up for is Self-Publishing 101. And basically, if you have a couple of books out, they're not selling very well and you're trying to figure out if there's more that you could be doing, more that you didn't know that you were supposed to do, this is a great class to um, find out in detail all of the pieces that go into building the platform and the foundation of your uh, publishing business. And there's another class too um, that James talks about briefly. That class is not open now, but Self-Publishing 101 is just for the next few days. Uh, if you're listening to this pretty close to when it comes out, on April 2nd. I think it's fabulous and I think that you should at least um, look into it. Worst case scenario, there's a whole lot of other free material on their website and you can at least kind of dip your toe in the water. Um, I think that the uh, information that they give is helpful in multiple ways for a lot of different people. If you're just starting out, definitely self-publishing 101 is super duper great. Um, if you just wish that your book sales were a little bit better and you're not sure if maybe there was more that you could have done and you didn't know, again, good. Um, if you feel like I've done all the things, I've taken all of the um, free material out there, I feel very confident that my work is, um, you know, just top of top notch, then maybe you, what you really need is the uh, advertising for authors course, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit in the interview uh, and won't open until the summer. But can you tell? Because I keep going on about it. This is a great course. They really did such an excellent job. So uh, we are going to be talking about it in detail. So if you're at all interested in even considering self-publishing or if you're already self-publishing, you're not in this class and you're interested, maybe should I sign up? Um, also, James talks about at the end, a free portion of their materials that they have opened up to the public. And if you sign up now while it's free, it will be free for you for life, which is amazing. So thank you again to Mark, James, and John. You guys are fabulous. I love you. <laughs> and um, I think that you guys will really enjoy the show if you're just wanting to get your teeth into some meat and some how-to and what should I do next. So here we go. Happy writing to you as well. And keep in mind that on Sunday, my monthly Encouraging Words episode will come out. And I have a, a couple of ideas that will hopefully encourage you as you are working at home for some unspecified unspecified length of time to help you feel a little bit more calmer, cooler, and um, happier. Uh, that's what encouraging words are for, to help bring up your joy and to make you feel like um, your life actually is really, really good because it is. Just remember that. All right. Have a great week. And here's the interview. 
Today's guest is James Blatch. James is one-third of the self-publishing formula, along with Mark Dawson and John Dyer. The three amigos have built one of the go-to platforms for indie authors with a ton of free courses and two paid premium online courses. James worked as a news reporter and presenter for the BBC in the UK for around 15 years after an earlier career in IT. He then became a film examiner, giving age ratings to film, video, and video games in London. This is where he met Mark and John. James went self-employed in 2013, starting a video production company before helping to found SPF. Welcome, James. Hey, Kissy. Delighted to be, well, delighted to be back. That's right. You were on a year ago talking about your own book, your own path uh, as a writer, as a fiction writer. I was. I'm slightly hesitant now that you're going to ask me where things are with that. Should we park that I for now? I promise not to. Yeah. We, well, just if anything comes up that's about your book and you're like, just edit that part out. I yeah. can do that. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, no, exactly. And that's one of the best things about, in fact, um, I've told you that I want you to come back on the show when you actually get the book, uh, when you hit the publish button and it's yeah. out there because it's such a journey. And sometimes it just gets people so frustrated and makes them want to give up. And it's take, here's the thing it's taken you so long because you have a full-time job and a family and other obligations that i think that you are going to be one of the best people to cheer other people on so that's why i'm going to have you back on the show again later <laughs> uh, I, I can tell you now i'm going to feel i'm going to be the brightest el most elated author of all time when that book's out there the sense of relief but it still feels like there's a mountain in front of me at the moment but so uh, yeah i, I want to get there yeah but actually, that's a great segue into what we're talking about today, because as a member of the self-publishing self formula team, you guys have got just some amazing material. And I know part of the reason why it's so quality is because you all have some experience in creating quality, you know, video and audio and, and um, both of you, all of you, I guess, were involved in, in the, um, the film ratings portion. And you, you just have so many pieces of the puzzle that you've been able to create something extraordinary. And so I wanted to just kind of ask you, how did it start? You don't, I, some people will know the whole story. You don't have to tell the whole story, but, but what got you from your, your past job to all of a sudden you're, you're not just writing, but you're creating ways for other writers to make a career out of it? Yeah, it was funny really that to think of me, John and Mark working together at the BBFC and we didn't work a lot side by side. I, I examined films with Mark quite often, um, but John had moved into education, so he didn't watch films in the same way uh, again. But I, I always try and remember the three of us being in the building with obviously no clue that a few years down the line we'd be running this business together. Yeah. Um, but rating films is just one of those things. It's an amazing job to have, really unique job to have. Um, but seven years is probably enough of sitting in a dark theatre in the eve, in the you know all day. Um, watching endless amounts of films some of which were amazing some of which were not amazing <laughs> um, and so I uh, I left and John and I got together and started this video production company and I, I wanted to work I got to that point where I wanted to work for myself and uh, didn't really fancy I'd never really done an ordinary job since I left computing years before um, couldn't face the idea of that so we started this video <laughs> production company which was fun but hard work and sort of limited in, in trying to grow the business quite limited by equipment and people and transport and all the rest of it um, and then after a few <clears throat> not so successful uh, uh, adventures trying to get something else going, Mark Dawson, out of the blue. I knew what he was doing. I knew that he'd suddenly got his teeth into book writing again. I was on his mailing list. So, so I got these annoying emails from him and occasionally <laughs> bought his book as a result of it. Uh, but that's about all I knew, kind of, that he, he was doing something and... Um, had no idea quite how successful he was starting, the results he was starting to see. But he called me and, and said, look, um, I think he, he'd seen Nick Stevenson do a course. So Nick Stevenson, his friend who's also, you know, starting to sell books online, had done this course teaching others. And the course had been as successful for him as selling books, uh, but in a much shorter time frame. And Mark's competitive and driven and entrepreneurial and he saw uh, he saw something that he could do and i think that was the first thing he thought i can do this because i thoroughly understand what's happening here and he's very nitty in in getting into the details of stuff he said i'm in a good position to teach others to do it uh, he his view was 
he's never for one moment thought, I can't teach too many people because then everybody will know the secret. His view was, this is a massive planet. It's a massive world. Millions more readers are joining the internet every day or getting a Kindle for the first time. Probably many more at the moment as we're all indoors. Yeah. Um, and he thought the more, pe- more authors we enable and liberate into this world, the better it's going to be a, a bigger and better world. And he wanted to be a part of it. So he phoned me up. He said, could you and John do the video side of things uh, for us? And so we, uh, we met in London at the BFI, very close to where we would end up having our conference uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, sketched out the idea on a Word document, which I've still got. It's, our, it's the modern version of the back of an envelope. It's just yeah. one, one page of a Word document with a few uh, lines. And he wanted to do this course, which we, we, we'd had dubbed kind of the 101 course. It would be the platform that you, you would understand how to build this platform. Everything you needed to do after you've written the end on your book. So he weren't, wasn't going to teach people how to write books. That wasn't his department. Doesn't want to do that. Other people can do that, but he does know why some covers sell books and some covers don't. He does understand the job of the blurb on the back. He does understand the role of a mailing list and he does understand the hundred days leading up to a launch and the hundred days that follow the launch and what you should be doing to maximize sales and find your audience, all that stuff. So we formed the company together and I think we were probably, that was February or March, March maybe. And I think by end of April, he realized he couldn't do it. <laughs> so oh, wow. he, he's very, very, um, what's the word, uh, earnest. And, you know, he sat down and he, once he sketched out what needed to be done, this 101 course, he realized he couldn't, he just didn't have the energy to do months and months of recording. Yeah on it so we pivoted at that point and instead of it he was always going to give up but we talked it through and John and I were very excited about the project at that point and we'd done quite a lot of work in setting the company up so we wanted it obviously to continue and we thought well is there one area a niche area you can teach and he said the biggest thing for me is Facebook ads Facebook ads changed everything Um, so I could do just that and it didn't feel like a, a big enough course at that stage but actually it was perfect because he did this completely detailed, this is how you use Facebook ads, how you use them to build a list, how you use them to sell your books. Um, and, and, and again, with very markness, very nitty, detailed, instructional. You literally, you could watch the course and do bit by bit, pause it, do a bit, pause it, do a bit. Yeah. Um, like that. And it, was, it appealed to a certain writer who has already got books out there, was trying to sell them, had a mailing list, probably had a mailing list at this stage, but didn't so they knew they knew a lot they were beyond the 101 phase but they weren't selling books and this was this opened things up for them and i can give you the names of the authors who to this day i mean ernie dempsey was one of the most uh, prominent for us because he was very early on and he was a teacher he wrote these books he had his main list never sold them did the course changed his life and he writes to <laughs> us about every three months ernie drops us an email and say did i tell you you guys here's the golf course i'm a member of here's my here's the house i bought my father and um and so it was amazing. And uh, yeah, we sold, sold enough to make a business immediately obvious that it was going to be successful. And he improved the one, uh, that Facebook course. I think we put it up for sale again in, in November. And, and then we thought, well, what do we do next? And we thought, well, there's that 101 course, that course you always wanted to do, Mark. Well, you've got time now. We've got money in the system. We don't have to release the course you know, in any particular order. So he spent six months. In fact, he got, he roped us all in. So he outsourced the kind of tech library to me and John, and we tried to look after as much of that as possible. So I, I was on a very steep learning curve of learning how things like MailChimp, what, well, I was learning what MailChimp was. Right. If you don't come from that world, you have no idea. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, you and I and everyone listening, every email you get, you look at the bottom, oh yeah, that's a convert kit email. Oh, that's a MailChimp email. And we yeah. know it all now. Um, and yeah, we put, put that together. It was a lot, a lot of hard work, very intense period for us. But the 101 course was the course you always wanted to do because that's the course where somebody who knows how to write or can write, but doesn't know anything more. And at that point, probably sending out query letters to agents and getting mm-hmm. these heartless rejections, if they, even if they if get they a rejection. Get one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is the course that says, hey, do you know what? You don't need to get the agent's permission to be a successful writer anymore because it's 
it's the 20 whatever it was 20 teens then yeah. um and so yeah we're really proud of the one-on-one course it's probably not overall as financially successful as the as the ads for authors course which has become a much bigger more detailed course but it's the one that's unlocked more careers and uh, so we're so yeah that's 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 where we are today and wow. my days now are, are running quite a big company that you know turns over money employs five people and um wow. yes it's turned everything upside down yeah and it's wonderful because um there are, there are places and times in your life when what you really want is just to feel good about what you've accomplished which is helping people who didn't have an author career have an author career and if it's not the biggest thing that you're doing financially like that's fine yeah sometimes it just you need the things that make you really feel good about what you do with yourself yeah i, I completely agree with that and i think but i think it's also important and because you're American, Kitty, so you understand this, but not in Europe and certainly in the UK, people don't necessarily understand it. That having an aim of being financially successful, doing something that, that is useful to people is also a good thing. Yeah. You know, that's a good thing. And you can look back. I look back at, and I do all the figures for Arkin, I do the spreadsheets and the, the accounts. And I look at our turnover and our margin and our profit. And I'm as proud of that as I am about anything else. Now, obviously, if we were selling, you know, meth, or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have the I'd be I'd have to be very immoral to but the bonus is doing something where you get these amazing emails from people and we travel the world and interview people who who've who found uh, the source that Mark serves has, has changed their life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, being successful. And that's part of what we teach. You know, we teach authors not to be afraid of being financially successful, to think of it as a business. Um because uh ultimately the reward for you is is many fold you know it's it's financial security independence sometimes if it gets beyond kind of how much you need to to live uh, and it's also writing for a living yeah which is amazing yeah and it's it's hard um there's so many people i mean i certainly grew up in in a portion of the united states you know the midwest it's part of the bible belt where um the idea of being rich meant there was something oh you want something bad and you know like yeah. i just turned 52 last week and it's still hard for me to go like that is not bad it is okay <laughs> yeah and I think it says that in the Bible. I'm probably not as a proficient on the Bible as you. I'm sure there's something Jesus taught about being the best you can. There's, there's, there's definitely language in there, which is yeah. don't, don't have a go at him because he's the tax collector, isn't it? He sort of says. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Although and, it also, and, also yeah. says it's difficult to get into heaven. Well, it just says you can't love both. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> oh, man. No, I think that's a, I think that's a, a, a key point of... Um, it is a morality issue and there are people who think that you can't be good and wealthy yeah, uh, yeah. or you can't be good and want that sort of thing but actually wanting success and wanting to be the best you can at something is morally good and sometimes the measure of that is is financial it's just yeah. sometimes it is sometimes it right. isn't of course if you're a paramedic it's not or a teacher <laughs> right. unfortunately yeah. but um in, in our world selling books probably that is the measure of your success yeah yeah and also there are so many things that you don't know what's happening. I mean, even when you have an email list and you stay in touch, there's a hundred things, a thousand things that you don't know what's happening in the lives of the people who are reading your book. And I have as the, the tagline for the podcast and the, the workshops that I do, write a book, change the world. Because there are so many books that have changed someone's life. I would say probably, oh, I don't, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say most. I'm going to say at least 51% of books have changed somebody's life, yeah. hopefully for the better. I think that there are also books who have changed people's lives for the worse, like how to create a, a, a pipe bomb. <laughs> That's yes. a real book. And <laughs> yeah. I don't really think that helps people <laughs> <No>. <laughs> in a good way. But there are so many things. And right now, I mean, you and I happen to be talking during the COVID-19. You know, it's, um, what is it? It's April 1st. Yes. Wouldn't it be great if we woke up this morning and we're like, oh, I it think was hoping world leaders would say ah had you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay we can go outside yeah <laughs> yeah sadly but, not man there's so many kinds of books fiction non-fiction everything that are, is going to help people to um not be bored get away from their kids get away from um thinking about the news or i mean there's so many reasons why 
reading a book is a great thing for your mind and your um, your just sense of self. So I'm obviously very passionate about the idea that books are good. Reading them, writing me them, this this is a very good use of time, energy, yeah. financial resources to create the business that makes it work. Because if you don't sell books, that means that people aren't out there reading them. So. Yeah, Like you said, it's a measure showing that you have done something that's worthwhile in other people's, not just other people's eyes, but it, it's hopefully doing something good in people's lives. Yeah. I mean, there's something very special about creating any kind of art, I think, um, yeah. because it can benefit people. It can contribute to society. And, and there's, you know, there's a very well-founded um, tranche of philosophy that says that art is the definition of our civilization. Um, uh, you can mark it. Uh, that way. I mean, that's not to say that people who produce, who design and build diggers are, on building sites are not also creating something. They're creating right. something. Um, but there's something I think about a bit of art and, and writing. And, you know, what are we, if what, what are we, if we don't define ourselves by our imagination, what are humans? They're just animals, but our imagination is what makes us different. I don't think my dog sits there I mean, I, my dog sits there thinking it might go on a walk later, but it doesn't imagine what life would be like if it lived somewhere sunny and hot or whatever. But yeah. we do. We yeah. do. We constantly escape into this world. And um, yeah, so, it, uh, so creating that, I think, is quite special. Yeah. And so, so now um, one of the things that you get to do, in addition to, I don't know if you feel like you have more time to write or <laughs> definitely in the last month or so, probably less, but, um, but now you actually get to work with other writers, which I find anything that puts me in touch with more writers to be fabulously wonderful. I'm going to the SBS live event and seeing, there was, there's like a line just to say hi to you and Mark <laughs> and John. And I was like, uh, I can say hi by email or something. <laughs> that was that was crazy. Um, yeah, that was brilliant though. But uh, it to was be there. great. Yeah, so everyone's so different though, don't you think? When you meet writers, you you know you meet some who are uh, very kind. Of, well, this is what I do, and this is what you need to do to be successful. And other people do something completely the opposite. Or some people hide all their skills. They 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 feel they make it look effortless when you talk to them, and you think, you, but you must get up at six o'clock every morning and write for four hours. <laughs> yeah, you, oh, I just enjoy writing. You know, they kind of throw it away. But everyone's different. You meet. <laughs> Yeah. Um, which is one of the interesting things about trying to tell people how to write is you can't, I don't think there is a formula in that sense. I think marketing, obviously there is things that are tried and tested, but even there there's, there's room for creativity. But when yeah. it comes to how you write a book, you can get quite a lot of conflicting advice. That's a great thing. I think about meeting more and more authors and, and standing there having conversations in a conference like that in itself can be inspiring because yeah. you'll find little bits of people who are like you and being successful. Um, and they'll say, oh, yeah, don't do that. Oh, I can't get up in the morning. And you think, how refreshing it is, because I'm not a morning <laughs> guy. Refreshing it is to hear an author. Instead of saying, oh, I get up at five, like Craig Martell, who writes <laughs> till three in the morning, um, to hear somebody say, oh, I can't write in the morning. No, I, I've, I've got to have my coffee. I start writing about 10. And you think, yeah. and you're successful. And you're writing an amazing series of books. So, yeah. Yeah. That's why it's good to meet other authors. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, Oh, so many things. There's so many things to talk about, but we need to focus. So, so there are two courses now, two main courses that are the paid courses. You guys also have been incredibly generous with putting out um, little short free courses. And in fact, um, I think that when you first put out the, um, the three video course that was the three video um, free version of ads for authors. Yeah. The like, list building. I, yeah, I literally did. I paused it, went and did it, came back, paused it, went and did it some more, and then like sold three books. And I'm like, yeah, I'm totally paying for this course. I think I signed up in your very first, uh, your um, second offering of the course. Um, I did. I do make a joke of um, <laughs> that. I I learned that just buying the course isn't quite enough. You actually, need to go yes. through it and do the work, yeah. which with all of my moving around, um, I have not gotten to until now, which is great because my world has been canceled outside of my office. And I'm like, yay, hey. <laughs> lots of time to write and work. So, um, so you've got two courses and, um, the way that you guys have organized things is to open them for short windows of time and then close them. And I, I believe that it seems 
it seems to me, you'll have to tell me, it seems to me that it's because you want to make sure that everybody understands what to do, that they get the support that they need, that you can focus on new people coming in so that they understand how to use the course. Because if people buy your course and then don't use it, don't understand it, don't finish it, don't follow it, um, then it doesn't actually do anybody any good. So right now, as we talk, um, you are going to have the course open for just another couple of days, maybe? Well, I think <clears throat> it's difficult to say. We're officially going to close uh, tonight. I can tell you already we're talking about potentially keeping open a bit longer. So an email's going out today saying it's closing tonight. Um, but uh, I would think, I don't know when you're planning to release this, Kitty. So this episode will go live um, about um, midday uh, London time tomorrow, April 2nd. So early okay. in the morning, April I, 2nd in the US. I mean, if, if nothing else, because this podcast is going out, let, we're going to keep it open a few days. So I think probably middle of next week, it'll be open until, um, but it'll be a kind of soft open. Officially, it'll be closed, but it'll be there. The link I give will work and we'll onboard people. Because what also happens is whenever we close it in the four days that follow, we get emails, not a lot, but you know, one or two people every day saying, oh, I meant to sign up. And I used to, I used to go and open it and say, well, I'm going to open it at midday for 10 minutes so yeah. you can get in. Uh, and now I've given up doing that. I just leave it open. And anyone who emails us the next four days, say, well, it's officially closed, but actually it's still there. You can sign on. I mean, I'll just explain a little bit. There's lots of reasons why we open it twice a year. And we occasionally talk about changing the system, but it, it suits us so well. Um, firstly, the original idea is that we would onboard people. And then we were told right at the beginning that a really key part of being successful online course creators is making sure people benefit from the course and they do it and they finish it. Um, so we'd onboard people for two or three weeks and then they'd all join the Facebook group supporting each other at the same time, going through the course at the same time. That was really crucial, kind of just a, an ecosystem of people doing the same thing. We also in that position to support them when the course was closed, we were also able to make changes to it. So I've just added Ingram Spark sessions to the tech library. Uh, we're updating the Squarespace because um, they've changed their platform. We do all of that in between the launches and it gives us a hard deadline. You need deadlines in life, right? Yeah. I need deadlines. <laughs> um, so we give ourselves deadlines to go. We've got to have it done by then. Then the course opens up again. And then we were told right at the beginning, there's a commercial aspect to that as well, that you only open it. So like a scarcity thing, you open it for three weeks. And I don't think it, it, um, it works in a scammy way. It sounds slightly scammy, but it's not. What it does, it focuses the mind of someone who might buy it. <clears throat> so instead of them thinking, oh, maybe one day I'll buy that, it's always there. They think I've got to buy it by Wednesday night. Um, and they've al always got to, we have a very open refund policy of a month, actually. You get that for a whole month. Any point you can say, oh, actually, I don't want it, and you get your money back. So we don't feel in any way that's uh, is pressured selling but it just helps people it helps it would help me bring me to the point of making the purchase if i knew there was yeah. a finite period of time so that works for us as well so for lots of reasons we we like that cycle it's also when the course is open we're busier and it's nice to close it and then do other things you know the other things in right. the company and write books and that sort of thing in between <laughs> right <laughs> <clears throat> okay so um so two different courses. The one that is open right now, because um, face, I'm sorry, um, it used to be called Facebook yeah, ads, for ads for authors. Now it's something. ads for authors, right? Yeah. Um, so that one is not open right now. It's self-publishing 101 that's open right now. Yeah, 101 is open right now um, at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash 101. Um, and yeah, that is the platform course. That's the one I was talking about that Mark originally wanted to do, but became too much of a beast. Um, but then we did it in 2016. I think we started this course, 2016, 2017. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, about right. And yes, it is a beast of a course. I mean, I've got it in front of me now. Um, I think we'll go through some of it, but yeah. it's, um, it's, it's the one that takes you to, to create the platform you need and to start selling books. Yeah. Uh, cuts you above... Uh, the vast majority, still the vast majority of people who write books don't do any of this stuff. It's you know, so it, it, shocking to me. It's, it's hard shocking. for me to remember that well, that's we, not... We meet each other so often. We meet yeah. everyone else in conferences and all these podcasts. We forget how what small group the people who listen to these podcasts are and the vast majority of people write a book design a terrible cover in paint and put it on Amazon yeah. and then are confused as to why they're not a bestseller. And of course yeah. we know it's not as simple as that. Um, but that does already put us into a small group. And 
one of the things that I wanted to mention, um, I actually started at the beginning of the course with my husband and we're working our way through all the episodes because he's getting to the point where um, he's been sending out a lot of, uh, re um, what am I trying to say? Query letters to agents. Okay. Uh, he's writing uh, middle grade superhero books okay. and um, a couple other uh, different genres that are all middle grade. They're just very they're they're fun they're kind of more books for boys you know and uh, i know some editors who have said there just aren't enough books for boys encourage your husband to keep going <laughs> so um so he's been sending out query letters it's been you know disheartening <laughs> um right. even sometimes you get a request for a full and you still don't hear back from the person who asked for it for a year and you're just like okay so did you really want it or not and so he's gotten to the point where he's he's like i want to at least know more so I can decide for sure. And I think that he is going to take um, one of the series uh, to self-publishing simply because of some things that he wants to do with it. He wants it to be kind of like American Saturday morning cartoons from when we were kids. Uh, and he wants to be able to have like a new episode every month kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So we've been going through the course. And the reason why I had the course in the first place is because listening to your podcast, which I think is, is it four years old now? Yeah, 220 episodes. So Crazy. that is amazing. One a week. Yeah, a bit yeah. more than one a week. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll talk about that in a minute too. But um, I would be listening to you and Mark in the podcast and Mark would mention one or two things, you know, here and one or two things there. And I was like, okay, I don't know that thing. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I sort of know what you're talking about, but I really don't, I wouldn't know how to do it. And so I actually bought the course because I figured it'd be worth the few hundred dollars for me to learn the one or two things I didn't know okay. in case that yeah. really helped. Uh, so, so I want you to talk about the course and I wrote down all of the, um, the module sections. We can kind of just want people to have an idea of what it is, because I really do think that this is going to be a great boon to anybody who decides to go ahead and, and sign up in the next few days, or, you know, you could wait until the next opening. But, um, but this is, this is a course that I think actually could be good for anyone who um, is near the end of their first book, and they're thinking, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to self publish it. But also, if you've got a few books out, and you feel like you have a pretty good handle on things. And, and yes, I think Ads for Authors is actually the course that you should take. But the thing about this course is, is that it tells you things that you didn't know. And even if it's three or four things, if those three or four things actually help you to, um, to like seriously expand how well you're doing it, how well you're, you're doing the process of self-publishing, then I think that easily you would find that you're making your money back just from learning a couple things. Besides the fact that somebody like my husband, every single thing and every single module is brand new. So uh, yeah. talk, to, talk to us about this. Well, I think that's a good point. I think there is definitely scope for people who, who might even be selling books but feel that there's something missing or they're frustrated that they're not getting the returns and advertisements that they want and they see from other people. I think this course is a bit of a reality check on your base, on your foundation. Um, yeah. So things like the front and back matter, and it does come down to small margins. Books are quite, you know, they're low value in terms of their price we put on them. So, you know, you might sell a book for $5 or, or typically less than that, but to $1.99, $2.99, that sort of thing. That means that you are, you've got to get every little bit right to squeeze that profit out of each individual book. And once you've got that, then obviously it's a, it's a uh, scale thing. You sell, you sell by scale and then you can make good money. But if you aren't making, if you aren't optimizing that. So I think the 101 course is the one that will teach you how to convert a reader into a mailing list subscriber, how to, how to turn a mailing list subscriber into a fan of yours and how to turn some of those fans into your super fans and the people who advocate for you. And once that starts working for you, which is exactly what Mark's done, the key to success. Uh, he's got 150 people, I think, on his street team now and regularly changes them. Um, he has fans and he's, he's built up a personal relationship from the moment they saw at the back of one of his books the very first thing they saw after the end is want to get the next book for free or something like you know whatever he's teaching yeah. the course so i think that um you know looking for those margins the course is very good for that um so it's broken down yeah it's broken down into how many modules do we have in here now so we <laughs> actually have nine the last one is called the tech library uh, and the tech library is so so it kind of leaves mark free to say 
right? You set up your mailing list and this, this is the sort of thing your, your email should be saying and the content of it. Here's a, here's a great sequence of emails. And it, par- it partitions off how you set up the email is a, is, is a detailed hand-by-hand instruction, hand-holding instruction set. So that gets put down into the tech library. So you go there, you choose whichever mailing list service provider you want. So I think we've got MailChimp, ConvertKit, MailerLite in here at the moment. We might add others. There's a couple of others that are in the background at the moment. Um, so let's say you're going to choose MailChimp. There's, there's, if I click on MailChimp in tech library, within there, there are one oh it's only one it's one hour now so okay i combined it i think i did i think maybe convert i split up into several ones so there's one hour tutorial that takes you through the entire process of setting up your lists in mailchimp um and then the same for convert kit uh convert kit let me have a quick look at that one as well you can't see this i'm doing this off screen <laughs> so convert kit is 92 minutes worth and that is split up into into four or five separate sessions so starting up then doing the um, automation tags and segments and all of this stuff sounds like gobbledygook if you don't know what I'm talking about, but that's the whole point of this is it's, it assumes you know, have no knowledge about this yeah. and takes you through it. Um, and the rest of the, so above that, that's the tech library which sits at the base of the, of the course. The rest of it split up into things like building your platform at the top, which is, um, you know, where you start, of course, you, you need a, we call it a platform sort of slightly big word for a website and an ecosystem that's yours online. Again, those small margins are affiliate marketing, which Mark talks about how you use Amazon affiliate links. So that can make a big difference. I think very early on for him, someone bought one of his books and the next day bought a Rolex watch (laughs) on Amazon. So he suddenly got his check for $225 from, um, so it made a big difference that one book sale. So yeah. these are the sort of things that you might not know about that um, that can make a difference to you. And even if it's twenty or thirty dollars a month, you know that covers a few of your costs. Doesn't covers your mailing list, probably subscription and stuff. Yeah. Um, module two is pre-publication, which is a big module. I think there are thirteen separate sessions in that. So this is the time. Now, who should be doing this course? You're talking about people who are selling books to, to check their platform. I'm the person who should be doing this course now. So I have got to a third draft of my book and about to make changes. Hopefully that will be it and it'll be published. Now's the time I should be familiarizing myself with the formatting stage, which is the next bit, the front and back matter, which what goes just before your book, what goes just after the text of your book, the cover, you know, there's a three quarters of an hour session just on the cover and why, how, how a cover works is more important than why it works. Um, the blurb, metadata, which is the categories and, and keywords you're going to use, pricing, the whole session on pricing, all this stuff. And then you start to get into, in the next one, uh, there's a whole module, by the way, on whether you should be in KU or why. It doesn't really give you the answer. Of course, no one can give you the answer to that. Uh, it just talks to you about the strategy if you're going to go into KU and what you're going to get out of it and the strategy if you're going to go uh, wide and what you're going to get out of it. At the time Mark did the course, he was wide and he's now KU. So it's quite interesting that he's, uh, he, he rightly at the beginning didn't take sides on it, just explained what they were and, um, and your different ways of doing it. Should we explain what KU and wide is to people? Yeah. I'm thinking, um, uh, my first thought was th- to say that I think that helping people to know what questions they should ask themselves to make their own decision is yeah. probably one of the things that I like best about the way that Mark teaches his courses is because he doesn't say this is the way you should do it. This is the way I do it because then maybe he learns something new. He changes what he's doing and <laughs> now he's got to go back. But instead, <clears throat> I think the nice thing about um all of the things that I've found in your course and other courses too, is that it gives you a ton of information so that you can at least go into this with your eyes open and with, um, with knowledge. And then what you choose to do or not do, you're basing those decisions based on um, real information, not just things that you heard or what somebody else is doing. Um, I'm not sure that based on just the, the amount of time that we have for the interview, maybe we won't go into what all of the pieces are, oh, though, sure. since you stopped to mention it. So yeah. Kindle Unlimited means that your book is, at least one book you have is only in Amazon uh, KDP as an ebook. It can be everywhere as a print book. And wide means that your book is also available on Kobo and iTunes and all the other platforms. 
Well, I think it's probably worth explaining. We mustn't assume that everyone knows all the jargon that I now are familiar with. Right. Um, but, <laughs> but very quickly, just the rest of the course, there's still a lot of it to go, but there's generating yeah. traffic module, uh, and that's a really huge thing, and how you get people to your book, um, various ways of doing that, and the more ways than you might imagine. That almost certainly you're not thinking of at the moment if you're not into this area. Uh, module seven is on your advanced team and then the launch process. Module eight is on getting reviews. It's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. You need reviews to get traction with your book, but how do you get reviews at the beginning when you haven't got any? Yeah. There are ways. Um, and then, yeah, then the tech library. And there's a couple of bonus things at the end. So author networking, which you're very good at, I think, Kissy. Uh, <laughs> how to do that, particularly if you're, um, you don't feel you're going to be very good at networking. As kind of a, a, a little mini lesson on that. And then there's a lesson from Brian Cohen on writing copy for Facebook ads, which is starts to hint at what the next course is all about, which is yeah. uh, the paid ads, a real, real um, focus on, on paid campaigns for your ads. Yeah. So it's a comprehensive course. I really, um, you know, I'm really proud of it. And every time I look at it, so now I'm looking at this thinking, what do we need to add to this? What do we change? And that's the other thing that we do. This course has changed quite a lot since we began it in 2016. Um, we always update it. Once you've, you've bought it, it's yours for life with all updates, all editions, and there's a bunch of other sort of uh, extra courses that go along with it. So we do, we bundle in things like Pinterest and Instagram. Uh, what else do we do? I have to look what else. Oh, the email just came out today. And that yeah. was Pinterest, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube. The YouTube yeah. course is fantastic. I mean, it's definitely a course that you could pay for just by itself elsewhere on the internet. It's been done by Garrett Robinson, uh, who runs a brilliant YouTube channel. It's a really comprehensive course. It's bundled in for free with 101. It's four modules in its own right, it's hours of tuition. But it's if you want to run a YouTube channel. And the reason it's bundled in is it's an extra. I wouldn't say to an author, you've got to have a YouTube channel. I would say to an author, you've got to have a mailing list. You've got to run uh, Amazon ads or Facebook ads, possibly a combination of both. Yeah. But there are a few things like a YouTube channel may it may well lend itself. You know, your husband's area could benefit from a YouTube channel, something definitely to consider, you know, that, that Saturday morning audience, you do read some stuff out, give some giveaways. Yeah. Uh, particularly if you're nonfiction, YouTube channel is very important. Uh, and that is a really excellent course on how to, uh, how to set up an effective one to drive traffic. Yeah. And that's the other thing that I um, think that is cool about um, just SPF in general, like as a community, you have somehow managed to create an amazing community where people who have never even met, you know, feel like they're close to each other. And then, you know, finally last a couple of weeks ago, oh my gosh, we got to meet each other. So yeah. you're who you are, and, you know, yeah. but also um, just the way that uh, like, I don't know what your reasoning is be behind it, but what it looks like to me is, um, oh, how cool. Like Mark doesn't have such an ego that he feels that he needs to be the face and the knowledge behind everything. Somebody says, hey, I could do this for you. And then boom, somebody does it and it's amazing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. I just think yeah. it's really cool that there's so much community involvement. Yeah. And we, you know, we are in a position with the company where we can, we can, write reasonable checks for people for experts in areas to produce a course for us yeah. and it's good for them because you know selling an online course is a big deal it's like it's, it's as big a deal if not bigger than trying to sell books yeah so you have to build a company around it so for someone like garrett he doesn't have to do that he just takes a check from us and produces this course um uh, and he's the expert at it he's an author who runs a fantastic youtube um youtube account uh and also i think it, you know we haven't talked about nonfiction or different genres, what it works for, but um, the course without question is well suited to nonfiction. It's a, it's a, you know, the, the platform you build for fiction is more or less the same for nonfiction. In many ways, it's easier for nonfiction because when you come to do your marketing, your adverts, you're basically solving someone's problem. Um, and YouTube works very well for that. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that people who are getting involved in 101 from a non-fiction perspective are getting you know extra value from it because all the examples in the 101 course are marks fiction examples that yeah. doesn't mean it doesn't pertain to non-fiction but it can at a glance look like that so the, the youtube for all this course is much more non-fiction orientated 
And at the live event, it was so cool to be able to um, listen to people's stories like right there in front of you. And one of the things that was so interesting was that um, you wanted to highlight um, the group of authors who are never going to be in the news. They make enough money that this is their living, but it's not so much money that somebody's like, oh my gosh, we're going to write an article about you. Um, and one of the questions I know comes up a lot, Three of the five authors on that stage were writing something for children. Yes, which was amazing. And um, yeah, in the early days of, of 101, we got that question, does this work for children's books? And honestly, we couldn't, we couldn't give you an answer on that because we, didn't, we hadn't implemented it. Yeah. But suddenly, you know, months down the line, our answer was changing on that. It's going, yeah, go and speak to Karen Ingalls. And, you know, uh, Ingalls, I should say, is how to pronounce it. Um, uh, and this happens all the time now, Kitty. We we get emails from people saying, I mean, coloring books has been the most recent one. People huh. making absolute killing and thanking us for unlocking their potential with coloring books. And they've used the 101 course and ads for authors to drive their career. And, um, and do, coloring books are killing it at the moment. Uh, so... So now our answer when people ask, instead of, instead of us saying, well, we're not sure, um, you know, why don't you have a look at it and, and get a refund if you don't think it's going to work for you, type, which is our kind of wishy-washy answer. Now our answer is it works for everything. Yeah. Because I don't think we're going to be surprised by you know, the next email that comes from someone who's doing DIY books or something and said it, it's been amazing for them. So it's, yeah. it's online marketing. It's driving, right. it's getting visibility, getting, finding your niche readers and getting your book in front of them. That's yeah. That's the basics. It's going to work whatever the genre. Some genres are more difficult to, to do than others, there's no question, sure. but uh, it will work. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a matter of putting in the, the time. Yes. It's, it's a lot of work. Just in, in case somebody's listening and thinking, I don't know, I, I, I think I might be able to get this traditional publishing deal and I think I'm going to be happy. I'm not trying to convince you that you should self-publish. No. It is so much work. I have far less time for <laughs> writing than I did when I was just writing and sending books to my agent. So... It's half your day, isn't it? I mean, I'd say yeah. it's half your day. Yeah. Um, and it's running a business. So the biggest thing, I think people often say to us, the biggest takeaway they get from listening to Mark for hours in, in 101 is that they treat it like a business. They stop treating it as a hobby or, or they're underconfident about asking for money for their books. They suddenly park the fact that they're the author in the morning and treat it as, an, as a product that somebody's handed them to market. Um, and so that also informs you because then that, that marketing person, you're... Jekyll and Hyde personality, your Mr. Hyde in the afternoon could go back to Dr. Jekyll in the morning and say, I don't want to be better for your next book, be a bit more market friendly. And that suddenly, because you're marketing your books more properly, business-like, you start informing how you're writing your books. And that happens to authors we know all the time. Their yeah. next series is going to be much more commercial because they now understand what that commercial thing is. And if they want to write the non-commercial stuff, of course, you know, they can start doing that because they're making some money with the commercial stuff. Yeah. That's how I ended up writing my current series. It wasn't really much of an idea about anything until I started reading the reviews for my first book was Chicklet. And um, I, I like to call it semi-sweet. I haven't actually used it in an ad because I figure you almost need to be American and a big yeah. baker to understand semi-sweet chocolate chips. I, I don't know but... what sweet and saucy is. A semi-sweet is a little <laughs> yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like it has... Um, uh, I'm just trying to figure out. I so this is. I try to be G-rated, but if you don't okay. want it, I'm just going to say it has shit, damn, and hell in it. Okay. okay yeah. <laughs> um, and so a little uh, bit more and, realistic, and yeah, yeah, and and no sex, but um, you know, other things. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy and, petting? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit of that, yeah. <laughs> I was like, do people still say that word? <laughs> Necking, I don't know. What that was. Yeah. It was, it was these English expressions, but yes. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I mean, that romance, there's sub-genres, the sub-sub-sub-genres of romance will never cease to uh, intrigue me and amaze me. <laughs> yeah, but in the reviews, I was getting some reviews that were saying, oh, I, wrote, I really like this book, but, you know, I didn't really like that um, the character swore or, mm -hmm. you know, that she and the guy were doing stuff by the fire. And, um, and I was like, mm, well, okay, uh, I'll write a series where there's nothing like that. And, um, and then like, I made a whole bunch of people happy and I'm still happy enough writing the books cause they're also super fun. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. I hadn't really thought about it. It's just that I say those words and yeah, hadn't thought uh, about other people. Yeah. And on that panel, we had Chris Butler, um, 
who writes under a pseudonym in in the states and we went to visit her actually in minneapolis because she's very successful with the cause and we got a sort of testimonial video from her and she was a, a professor at a local university decided she wanted to write and sort of started this is the podcast and tuned into the commercial aspect of it and then chose her genre which was it's actually erotica or saucy kind of romance erotic romance i think is probably the correct expression and she had never read an erotic romance book in her life <laughs> never really read romance books in her life her, her literary choices were booker prize winners that sort of thing um but she read read them laughed out loud reading them enjoyed them and is now one of the leading authors in that genre <laughs> and she chose that commercially because she could see there's a big market for it and she wanted to write into that market. Yeah. And what a great thing. And she can't wipe the smile off her face from the success <laughs> she's had as a result. That's right. And um, just to, okay, first of all, just to let people know, I do not have any affiliate links with this class <laughs> or with the show or the program in any way, but I do think it's awesome. And, um, and you don't have very much time. If you're listening to the, this episode, when it first comes out, you've got just a, a few days to decide if you're going to do it now, otherwise you will have to wait a few months. Um, but I think that one of the great things about it is that the community certainly by now is so big. There is no question that I think that you can come up with that you can't find somebody who can help you answer it because they've gone through it too, or they've tried to figure out what they're going to do about this question. So that's the other thing. Uh, in addition to the course, there's just this huge amount of sort of um, knowledge base that's in people's heads and comes out through Facebook posts. Yeah. Yeah. The Facebook groups are, are great. And I learn from them every day. Um, yeah. yeah. So you and get ex exclusive access to a Facebook group, which goes along with the course. Yeah. Now, um, people are also going to be thinking to themselves, okay, this, this ads for authors course, just in case that you don't have time to come on the show and tell us about that later. Um, tell us a little bit about that. And again, I think that you said uh, self-publishing 101, it's about to close right now. It'll probably reopen again in November, if I heard what you said right. And then yeah. what can people be um, expecting so that they can decide more and be ready when... Um, uh, it's called ads for authors, right? I have to yeah. keep remembering to say the, the better name, the new name. <laughs> Advertising for authors or ads for authors. Yeah. Um, so I think probably we'll do one on one again in October, actually. And then um, October or November uh, and ads for authors will open in June. I mean, that's obviously we're in the middle of COVID at the moment and things are up in the air a little bit, it's potentially some movement there. But at the moment, I think we're planning to open ads for authors in June. So yeah, it's, it's a, it feels very different course uh, ads for authors. The, the modules are much more specific. So the whole of 101 covers quite a lot of different areas. And then you do get those other courses like YouTube, which are very specific. Ads for authors is, is a set of different courses. So the two main ones are Facebook ads for authors and Amazon ads for authors. Now, Facebook ads were the ads that built Mark up to where he is today and drove his career. When I met him, it was Facebook ads were making the major difference to him. It's how he found his readers, built up his mailing list, built up a, a loyal uh, fan base, but also started selling books directly through those ads as well. Um, he's now, then Amazon ads came along uh, from nowhere and he played with them for a bit and they are now taking more of his time and money than Facebook ads. I do meet people the other way around. They say Facebook ads work for them, not Amazon ads. And all the time, it's quite difficult to work out where the genre split is on this. It seems to be, I'm not sure why, but for other people, it might be age groups. Amazon ads work well and Facebook ads don't work so well. Mm -hmm. The Amazon ads course, so Mark did that. Uh, it wasn't as detailed uh, and nitty as the Facebook ads course because the platform gives you far less, far fewer choices, Right, I should say. But we're addressing that because we're delighted that we've signed up. It's a big signing, like a football team. Um, <laughs> Janet Margot, who has literally just come from the Amazon Ads team in Seattle. So wow. One of the architects of the platform, uh, one of the people who's working towards its next iteration, has stepped away from it uh, into another area. I think IMDb, uh, another area of the Amazon empire. But that has freed her up to do the course she wants to do because she's frustrated at authors not using the platform to its potential yeah. so she is now in the middle of recording this course and it will replace amazon ads for authors it'll be done by janet i've had the first mod module yesterday actually and went with some feedback to janet about some stuff so it's coming on really nicely so we think the amazon ads course will be absolutely on a par in terms of its detailedness detailedness is that a word yeah um, level of detail uh 
uh, with with Facebook ads, and that's going. To, we're very excited about that. So that will make a significant difference to the ads for authors course. So, and this is this is for people who have a platform. They've got their website. They've got their mailing list, um, but you know, there's some some things not quite working for them, or they want to scale up to the next level. That's what the ads for authors course is. Um, yeah, and it's um, yeah that will come up come up in June, maybe before. I don't know. And so if people go to your website, um, I assume that you have an email, uh, an email capture there. Um, will they get emails um, telling them about both courses in case people are, are not signing up right now, that, but they want to know about when things are going to open? Yeah. So if you simply go to selfpublishingformula.com, there's a start here uh, thing. And the first thing you get is the mini course that you talked about, Kitty, at the beginning, which is a detailed in its own right, three episodes of how to run Facebook ads to build your mailing list. So that will come to you via, and that's our onboarding mailing list uh, sequence. So in your first 10 emails will include those, that lesson. Um, and from then on, you'll be on the list and you'll hear about both, um, yeah, both courses as they come up from time to time. But there's a, a ton of other stuff. So we have this university thing, which um, we call a university. It's not a real university, uh, but we do live training. It's part, it was a kind of bonus for people who bought a course or supported our podcast. And once a month we'd have live training and then we'd put it on the shelf. So there's this big collection of quite specific training events uh, for authors because of COVID we've opened that up for free for now. Oh, so wow. anybody can get into that and cause you've got time on your hands and now's the time to do it. So actually if you go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash SPFU free SPFU free or one word you can sign up and you get immediate access to those so we had one last week um what was last week's on everything um like... it was kdp or it's not called kdp rocket metadata. Anymore. Yeah, it was pro- yeah. Pro- yeah yeah it was metadata with um with dave chesson so yeah publisher rocket so it's all about keywords and uh categories and how to find them to use them and the power of all that stuff the next one's going to be on instagram stories in a couple of weeks uh with stuart grant and yeah, so uh, for the, I think for the whole COVID period, you'll be able to get in for free and you'll be in for life for free. Uh, then it'll go wow. back to, yeah. So we'll, we're doing that for, uh, for now. That's brilliant. I love, these are the things that I love about when the world starts to fall apart a little bit, like all these beautiful other things come out of it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's nice. Now, one last thing. I know that we're um, we're running up against the clock here. Um, I I always tell myself um, somebody is on the treadmill right now, and they're thinking, "Please stop talking." Then I know I can be done with my <laughs> exercise. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so one other thing. Um, because this is an international office uh, audience, I think that there's probably at least a few people out there like me. And um, if there are, uh, you may be thinking, I'm the only one that this is happening to and I don't know who to ask. So here's, here it is. I have been moving around to different countries and every time I move to a different country, I have to find out what the rules are in running a business in that country. And are the rules having to do with residency in the country or not? Because if it has to do with residency, suddenly I'm creating a new business again in a new country. And then my husband switches uh, projects again and we move to another country. So in my current country, I cannot actually read any of the business and government information because it's in Swedish. And trust me, um, Google Translate is brilliant, but it's not brilliant enough for business. (laughs) So... Um, if there are people out there who um, have this sort of um, situation where what I had to do was I had to bring my business down to making zero income, which unfortunately was the one thing I was quite successful at. <laughs> 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 but now that I'm uh, figuring out how to actually restart my business and, and do it legally and everything, I really am kind of starting from zero. There are going to be other people listening who have some other reason why they've got books out there, but there was um, a death in the family, a sickness in the family, some other thing, which um, you stopped working on your business. You have books out there that are, you know, number 2 million in the Kindle store. I say that because I'm pretty sure one of my books is like number 2 million, (laughs) which means nobody has seen this book in ages and ages. I am pretty sure, because this is part of the reason why I've been um, going through SB 101, self-publishing 101 course with my husband, um, and not just telling him, go go watch it yourself, is because I'm pretty sure that a lot of the information in that course is going to help me to relaunch, basically start over, do a fresh launch, if there's some reason why 
you you had to put your business on hold and everything has kind of fallen down to zero. Would you agree? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, in fact, the international thing is quite an interesting point because we occasionally we get an email from someone saying, does this work in Australia? And we always say, well, that's not the question to ask. It's, the, it, it's where you're selling your books that matters. So you might be in Australia, but America is still probably your biggest market. Right. And yes, of course, this is entirely geared around that. I mean, I'm, we're now, Mark and I have started a little publishing house for um, people who just don't want to do this themselves. We'll take on a few select books. And we've got one series at the moment, and America is our biggest market, even though it's a British author, we're in the UK. Um, so a lot of the stuff that you teach here, it doesn't matter. You could be on a beach in Thailand. You could be in beautiful Sweden, or probably grey Sweden. It's grey, <laughs> right now. It's grey UK today. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's a consistency. It brings you that consistency. I think the the layer below that you're talking about, like where you, you file your taxes and stuff. I mean, obviously that's a slightly different world and that will change. And Scandinavia is not the most tax friendly part of the world to be in, I would say, probably. I'm not actually sure yet. <laughs> no, yeah, I think yeah. They, they're famous for their high taxes anyway. So I don't think anyone yeah. has their, um, I don't think anyone flocks to uh, Norway and Sweden or Denmark as a tax haven. <laughs> no, uh, no, definitely. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot the other stuff is universal, isn't it? It's global. And that's the whole beauty of the internet. That's what the internet's opened up for us is that ability to sell, to find your reader in, you know, in, in Southern California or, or uh, Timbuktu, to use the older euphemism. Still yeah. called Timbuktu, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and if there's some reason why you've had to let your business go, this can help you to relaunch it and to freshen up anything that you're like, oh, I, I don't think I actually did my blurb as well as I could have, yeah. especially now that I've been listening to this section of the course or well, if getting we're a new launch team. Or if we're really well organized, we should revisit that every couple of years anyway, shouldn't we? But it is yeah. difficult to do that. Actually, having to redo your business is a good excuse, as, you, as you're alluding to, to say, right, let's go through it again. But every two years, every two or three years, maybe you could redo all your covers. Yeah. You, know, you can relaunch your books. How many covers has Harry Potter books had? Oh boy. The latest iteration of them now. How many covers has Jaws had? It's the same basic cover, but it's a lot. It's changed very often. That's not. Yeah. That's not by accident. That's them thinking we need to give this a refresh. We need to get a spike in the sales again on this. Yeah. So yeah, the one hundred and one course definitely is an opportunity to do that. Excellent. James, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I know that we are getting really close to this is my writing time. We have to stop talking yes. now. I'm excited about that. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> Two o'clock. So I've got an hour and a half. I'll go and have some lunch. Um, nice. No, it's, it's been my pleasure, Kitty. My, my, um, you know, my big feeling about this, I'm quite sort of uh, evangelical really about changing the world with publishing. I don't think the publishing world up until now has has been very fair to authors overall. It's been fine for some, the lucky few, but for the vast majority, it's a dispiriting experience. And that sense of control you have, which Mark is, you know, is one of the loudest preachers of, that taking control, creating your own opportunity to be a successful indie author in your hands and not having to wait for gatekeepers other people is a marvelous thing. So we're very happy to be a, a part of that and enabling for some people. That's awesome. I'm so excited. All right. Tell us again, where can people, and in case anybody wants to find your book, I mean, feel free to say your own website, but tell also where can we find uh, all the information we need about the class and the podcast, which we've mentioned, but haven't really talked about. Yeah, sure. So selfpublishingformula.com is our home and you can sign up to the main list there. All the podcasts are listed there. Um, the two other addresses I'll give, they're both selfpublishingformula.com. So it's forward slash 101 to read all about the 101 course whilst that's open. Um, and uh, also that SPFU free, so forward slash SPFU free. I think that's a good place to jump on. If you jump on there, you'll also join the mailing list, by the way, so you don't have to fill the one on, on the um, on the website. But that gives you immediate access to, I think, probably 10 or 12 uh, live training events now going back a bit. So, um, yeah, all there, selfpublishingformula.com. And, um, yeah, Kitty, great pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you for being on the show. We're so glad you were here. You're, you're very welcome. Let's stay inside. I'm going to say go outdoors and get some fresh air. Stay inside. Stay safe. <laughs>